Okay, hi everyone. Welcome to this video. It's about OMMC problem of the month for June. And here is the problem. So, okay, we've got a triangle with centroid G. So let's hope I can actually draw this diagram. So A, B, C. Because last time I tried to draw it, it did not work very well, and then I didn't solve the problem correctly. So anyway, we have this point G, and then we're rotating points around G. So let's see, where does B go to? Well, counterclockwise is that way. So B goes to like somewhere around here, I think, though that's probably not very accurate. And then B2 is here. I'm just kind of like jumping around in the problem. So yeah, B goes to B1 and B2. And I'll draw like segments connecting them to G, indicating that these segments are all the same length. Okay, now let's rotate C. Oh no, I'm probably going to crash into the problem statement. So let's move the problem statement a bit up. Okay, so how would C be rotated? Well, if C is rotated 120 degrees this way, then it would go somewhere over here. And the C2 would end up around here, I think. So yeah, I'm going to draw these segments again. So it would look something like this. And then we want to prove that A, B1, C2, and A, B2, C1 are equilateral. So that would be this small one here and this larger one here. But I kind of don't want to screw up the diagram anymore, so I'm going to not draw those. Anyway, okay, so what do we notice about the diagram? Well, okay, an interesting thing to notice is that we're trying to prove that some triangles are equilateral, and we actually already have like kind of the notion of equilateral triangles because 120 degrees relates a lot to equilateral triangles. And if you think about it, these three blue segments, the G, B, G, B1, and G, B2 kind of form an equilateral triangle if you connect them like this. So there's kind of an equilateral triangle hiding here. And same for the C, and same for the purple segments connecting to the C points. So I wonder if there's a way to use these equilateral triangles to create, to find that these other triangles are also equilateral. Well, you know what? There's, an, there's a very useful point that we can draw that will give us even more equilateral triangles. So say we reflected B about G, or we just extended this line basically to form the point B prime. Then note that because BG is twice the length of like GM, if we call this midpoint M, actually this blue rhombus yeah, this blue thing is a rhombus basically with angles 60 degrees and 120 degrees. So we now have two more equilateral triangles, these two right here. Okay, so what next? Well, so, oh yeah, let's draw this on the actual diagram. So this is B prime. And then we know that this blue thing is also equilateral. And there's a reason why I chose this specific one. I'll talk about this in a minute, but basically, okay, so which out of these two triangles do we want to prove are equilateral? I think it suffices to only prove one because the other one like technically is also equilateral by the same reasons. Like you can kind of use the same methods and stuff. So if I would choose one, I guess I would choose the bigger one because it just looks a bit more convenient. So we basically want to prove that A, B1, C2 is equilateral. So this yellow triangle, we want to prove that the yellow triangle is equilateral. And we know that the blue triangle is equilateral also, which means that it suffices to show triangle B1, B prime G is similar to triangle B1, A, C2. Okay, now, now I'm going to introduce an interesting thing called spiral similarity because, so when you have two similar triangles that share a vertex, 
they actually create an interesting con configuration called spiral similarity. So spiral similarity is when you have two, two similar triangles. Here's one and here's the other that share a vertex. So they must be similar in a particular way, actually. These two angles are equal and those two angles are equal and they share a point. So let's call this point A and let's call these points B, C, D, and E. Okay, now the spiral similarity configuration is very special because it has a lemma and the lemma is if triangle ABC is similar to triangle ADE, then triangle ABD is similar to triangle ACE. So which means that let's use highlighter to highlight the triangles that would then be similar. ABD and ACE. And the proof is really simple, so I'll just quickly talk about why this is true. So yes, these two orange triangles are similar. And the reason why they're true, well, so first of all, it's obvious that the top angles are equal if these two, wait, I did not mean to use that. So obviously these two top angles are equal because they're just angle D, A, E minus B, A, E and angle BAC minus angle BAE, which are obviously equal because DAE and BAC are equal. So those two pink ones at the top are equal. So by SAS, it suffices to show that AD over AB equals AE over AC. However, we know that AD over AE equals AB over AC because of this first similarity. Because of the first similarity, we know this, which directly implies that by just like equation manipulation. So therefore, it's obvious that if ABC is similar to ADE, then ABD is similar to ACE. And actually it's an if and only if statement. So if the second thing holds, then the first thing also holds. Okay, so how would we apply this lemma to the problem? Well, if it suffices to show this is true, then it also suffices to show something else is true. Then it also suffices to show that triangle B1, B prime A is similar to triangle B1, G, C2. So, and this second thing, I promise, is actually much easier to prove because we know some of these lanes already. Well, actually, first of all, there's another thing to note. It, it not only suffices to, to show that they're similar, but actually we want to prove that they're congruent since, okay, if I were to like actually draw which triangles I'm talking about, let's see. What's a color that has not been used before? Actually, maybe I'll use like some highlighter color, even though highlighter looks really weird sometimes. But anyway, so triangle B1, B prime A, should be this dark blue one. Why is this so hard to see? Okay, I will color it in to make it easier to see. Coloring in takes a long time. Okay, there. And the other one is B1GC. Yeah, B1GC2, which is this. So we want to prove that the two dark blue things are congruent, basically. The reason why we want to prove they're congruent and not only similar is because we actually already know that two of their sides are equal, and those two sides are B1, wait, no, I did not mean to use highlighter, B1, B prime, and B1G. So we already knew these two were equal, which means not only must they be similar, but they must be congruent. So now we want to prove that they're congruent. So actually, we want to prove they're congruent. Okay, there's, there's actually other interesting things about these two triangles though. There's other segments, there's other sides that we also know are equal. So take 
So note that if we draw another diagram, like just a super simple one to just like illustrate something for a second. So if we look, if we look only at like this median BV prime and like focus on it and okay. So B prime would be like here and that is G A C. Then actually triangle, not triangle, quadrilateral A G C B prime is actually around this. And the reason for that is because its diagonals bisect each other, which is the definition of a rhombus, because BG is a median and medians pass through the midpoint of the opposite side, which is the midpoint of AC. So actually, AB prime CG is a rhombus, which means that AB prime is the same length as GC. And yeah, okay, so I'll write this over here. So because a, B prime, C, G is wrong this. A, B prime equals G, C. And the reason why G, C is important is because G, C is equal to G, C, too, since C is being rotated around G. So this is equal to G, C, too. So therefore, we know that the two triangles share another same length, A, B prime, and G, C, too. Um, by the way, you can't really see that that's B prime, but it is B prime. So, okay, let's highlight the two new lanes that we know are equal. So this and this. Okay, awesome. So now we've proven that these two triangles share two components that are equal. Note that if you wanted to prove something's like congruent, you need to prove three things, either like two sides and an angle or two angles and a side. So we only need to prove one more thing is equal between them. And that one more thing, well, do we, well, do you think we should prove that it's, it's like the third side? Well, no, because the third side is literally what the problem is asking. Like the problem is asking that that yellow thing is equilateral. So if that was so easy to prove, we wouldn't even have to go through all this trouble to prove it. So we're not going to prove the last side. Instead, we're going to try to prove this angle between the white segment and the purple segment. So this angle, I'll color orange here and yellowish there. So it suffices to show that the orange is equal to yellow. So it suffices to show orange, orange equals yellow. Okay, now let's let's look at what the orange and the yellow actually are. So hopefully I have like a little bit more space left. So Orange is actually equal to 60 degrees plus angle GB prime A. And the reason for that is because, so if you look at this equilateral triangle that's been shaded here, B1, B prime G, that's equilateral. And part of this orange angle is, in, is like that 60 degree angle. So it's just that 60 degree angle plus what's left, which is GB prime A. And now let's look at the yellow one. Yellow equals 120 degrees minus angle B, G, C, 2. The reason for that is because, so the 120 degree angle is slightly harder to see, but it's this one. Because I don't know why I'm coloring that yellow, but it's this one. So B, G, B, 1 is 120 because the other one is 60. So it's obviously 120. And so the, the so yellow angle here is just that yellow angle minus this little sliver, which is BGC2. So since it suffices to show that these two are equal, so then we just want to prove using a bit of like moving stuff around that angle GB prime A plus BGC2 equals 60 degrees, I think. Yeah, I think that should make sense. So now let's look at what GB prime A and, and BGC2 really are. So actually, moving, moving back to this like simple diagram, GB prime, GB prime A is this pink thing. See, I'm going to color pink, 
which is actually also equal to this one by transversal angles. So, which means that GB prime A is this right here. My diagram is getting really messy, but like just don't bother. Anyway, so yeah, so those pink things are equal. And BGC2, well, if you think about it, okay, I'll color it in. Wait, I'm running out of colors. Maybe blue or something. So this like sliver of an angle, BGC2, is actually like, if you think about it, it's like the measure between a GB chord, not a chord, but like a GB line and a GC line. Cause like when we were spinning the things around like 120 degrees, like we had this and then, wait, and then we had this. So the BGC2 is really just this angle like between the two lines, which means that it, sh it should be the same all around since they're, since like the purple thing and the blue thing, they're the same, just like shifted over. So that blue angle is like the same all around, which means that it is also equal to this like little blue sliver right here, B1 GC. So, and obviously, this purple and the pink right next to each other right here obviously add to 60 degrees because they add to this angle right here. So, therefore, obviously, add to 60 degrees. Therefore, we're done. So, we're basically done with the problem now. The only thing you might ask is, like, what about config issues? So, there are config issues. But if you use directed angles, like take angles mod 180, it should be fine. And also like, and if you really wanted to just go through all the configs and do the angle chasing for all of them, that would also work too. This is just the general idea of how you would do it for like one config. So yeah, hope you understood it. See you next time. Bye.